Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to do a Unit 2 FRQ for AP Human Geography on the Demographic Transition Model. If you'd like to do this FRQ before I go over the answers, you can. The link to the document is in the description down below, and you can take some time to respond to the questions using your own knowledge, and then come back and review them. But if you just want to review the content or you've done the FRQ already, let's go through this. So it says here, Argentina is in Stage 3 of the DTM. Now we're actually given the DTM so we can see what stage three looks like. So with stage three, we can see that the death rate continuously decreases. It's not decreasing as much as it did in stage two, but it's going to continue to decrease as healthcare advances, as medication is diffused, as sanitation is more widespread, and so on. The birth rate, however, starts to take its initial drop. So the birth rate is going to drop pretty, pretty high. It's going to drop exponentially, I would say. And so the total population isn't going to go into decline, but it's going to increase a lot less. It's going to increase at a linear rate compared to stage two where our, our birth rate, not our birth rate, our natural increase rate is increasing at an exponential rate. And that exponential rate is what Thomas Malthus said during the Malthusian theory would cause population collapse and would cause chaos and would cause us to go over that carrying capacity here. It didn't account for countries to go into stage three, stage four, or stage five. Now, on an FRQ on the AP exam, if they ask you about the demographic transition model, or they give you an FRQ that's pretty much focused on the DTM like this one is, they're probably going to give you the model, which is a good relief because that's going to save you time on visualizing what's happening in the different stages. On the multiple choice, they would probably only give you the model if they give you three straight questions on the DTM in a row. So they would do that to save time because you're going to be continuously thinking about the DTM for multiple questions here. And they don't want you to get confused and they don't want you to spend more than three to four minutes on these questions. So let's go through each of the parts now. So part A, it's an identify. So you just answer this with one sentence. Identify the stage of the DTM where the total fertility rate of a country is the highest here. So basically, what we're going to be looking at is the birth rates. What stage of the DTM has the highest birth rates? That's going to be stage one. Our stage one of the demographic transition model is where our total fertility rate is going to be the highest. Our stage two, it might be that high, might be a little bit lower though. That's typically what we see is that that stage two, the birth rate drops very, very minimally, but it does drop. And then stage three, it drops exponentially. And then stage four and stage five, it kind of stays at that static rate there. So stage one is where the total fertility rate is going to be the highest. That's when the country is the least developed. It probably hasn't industrialized yet, right? It hasn't had a medical revolution yet. And at stage one, our birth rates can be very, very high. We have a very, very high infant mortality rate and a very, very high maternal mortality rate. So that death rate is going to be very, very high. And it ends up that the birth rates and the death rates end up canceling each other out. So there's going to be very little population growth. So that's actually similar to stage five. Stage five, we start to see very, very little population growth. It actually may decline in stage five. Stage four is also pretty similar. I would say stage one is more similar to stage four than stage one is similar to stage five because stage five has that decline. Stage four is pretty static. We see population growth not be very high, but we don't see it very low either. It's kind of static. Part B, explain one factor that causes a country to move from stage two to stage three of the demographic transition model. So what goes from stage one to stage two? Typically, we've seen industrialization and manufacturing as the main reasons for moving from stage one to stage two. A lot of countries in South America and Asia progressed from stage one to stage two in the 20th century due to the medical revolution, but that was accompanied by industrialization and manufacturing as well. So they're a little bit further behind in their economies than a developed country like the United States or those in Western Europe are. But what causes countries to go from stage two to stage three? We see decreasing birth rates. We see improved access to contraception and changing social norms and culture that will inevitably reduce the birth rate. So remember, when we look at that model, the stage three shows that initial steep birth rate decline. It's probably declined a little bit in stage two, but in stage three, it declines exponentially. And that's going to lead to slower population growth. We see a lot of urbanization. As countries industrialize and inevitably urbanize, because that's where the jobs are, family sizes will shrink because living costs are going to be higher and there's going to be a fewer reliance on child labor. They're not going to have as many children working in the factories as they would working on farms. Living costs in cities are higher. They're going to have less space in the cities. Crime rates may be higher as well. Education systems, at least K-12 education systems, may not be as great. 
There's an increased education for women. Greater educational and employment opportunities for women will lead to them delaying marriages or not getting married at all. And as a result, they're going to have fewer children, and that's going to lead to lower birth rates. There's economic development as countries typically move up these stages. The DTM is not an economic model, but we see correlation here. We see as people move to these cities, and as they work more, they have rising incomes, and the standards of living uh, increase, and it's not going to have a need for a large family anymore. And parents can no longer rely on children for economic support. It's just all about the money. Oh my goodness. Part C. Describe how Argentina's total fertility rate changes as it progresses through stage three of the DTM. So I gave both the population pyramid and the DTM here for this FRQ. You really don't need both of them, but I gave both just in case you need help here. So we can look at the population pyramid and see that Argentina it's not really growing exponentially. It's growing at a pretty linear rate. And if we look at stage three on the actual model itself, we can see that population growth is increasing at a linear rate as opposed to stage two, where it was going through an exponential growth. So we can see that the total fertility rate is declining. So that means that the population growth is not gonna be as big as it was during stage two previously. Part D, explain one reason for why the change in the crude death rate, the CDR, during stage three of the DTM. So what happens to that crude death rate? Well, let's look back here. So we can look at the death rate. It's that straight black line here, and it continuously decreases. It doesn't decrease as much as it does in stage two, but there's further advancements in healthcare that leads it to decrease even more. So we see increased access to clean water and better sanitation, vaccines and antibiotics that can combat infectious diseases. Um, a big one here from stage two to stage three is combating viral diseases. Stage one to stage two is focused more on bacterial diseases. Antibiotics get rid of bacterial infections, but you could say bacterial or you could just say infectious diseases. That's fine as well because those do decrease as you go from stage two to stage three. Advances in food production and distribution reduce malnutrition. No, there's not going to be much famine. People are not going hungry and starving. Declining infant mortality rates contribute to the overall decrease in the death rate. I didn't finish that one. Urban areas typically improve living standards. Education on hygiene and healthcare, you could say reproductive healthcare, gynecology, helps reduce deaths from preventable causes. It can reduce the maternal mortality rates as well as the infant mortality rates. So there's a lot of different responses here that you could have given here. And we're kind of relating this to the ETM, the epidemiological transition model, which explains health and causes of deaths within the different stages for countries. E. So we're shifting away from the DTM and we're talking about the Malthusian theory. So what is the Malthusian theory? So population growth will inevitably outstrip or go over food production, leading to resource shortages. Now, why does this happen? You could have said either or of these. Populations grow exponentially. Food supplies increase arithmetically. Now, we're not saying that this is true. We're just saying what Malthus said when he created the Malthusian theory. He said populations grow at an exponential rate, so there's going to be, at a time, food will be abundant for the people. However, if you look at an exponential function, it'll go over that linear function, which is how food supply increases. So that's going to lead to scarcity of food resources that will result in famine and population decline. So that's the Malthusian theory. If you said either or of these, or basically the, you have to say that population goes over food supply and that's going to lead to shortages that will lead to famine or population decline. One of those three things here to get the point for this part. Part F, explain the degree that Argentina's population change reflects the ideas behind the Malthusian theory. So we're talking about Argentina going into stage three of the demographic transition model. So Argentina is in stage three. So the CBR, the crude birth rate, and the natural increase rate is now declining for the first time. Now, the natural increase rate isn't below zero. It's not negative, but it's decreasing from what it was previously in stage two when the total fertility rate was a lot higher now. So with these explained the degrees, you kind of have to do three different steps. The first step is to state the degree. We call it the degree of relevancy. How true is this statement? Does Argentina's population change reflect the Malthusian theory. And in this case, it does not. So we're going to say it has a low degree. The second step is you're going to have to explain why. Basically explain what's happening in Argentina and then explain how that doesn't reflect the Malthusian. So that's our three steps here. So Argentina's progression from stage two to stage three is accompanied by a decline in the crude birth rate, which indicates population growth isn't growing uncontrollable. And then you can elaborate further about how this doesn't represent the Malthusian theory because it won't lead to food shortages, how food production will still uh, outspace population growth, and so on. Argentina's decline in crude birth rate and natural increase rates indicates that the population growth does not currently outpace food production or any kind of resources.
With an increase in urbanization and access to education, especially for women, family sizes in Argentina have decreased. The availability of family planning services in Argentina, you could say something like contraception, has led to lower birth rates because people can pick when or where they have a family. Part G, the final part, explain one economic effect that can occur as Argentina moves towards stage four of the DTM. So as countries develop, they will go to the later stages of the DTM. Now, what happens after stage five? We don't know yet. Does the population collapse? We'll see once countries get there. So Argentina, as it moves towards stage four of the DTM, will see economic growth stabilizing, and they'll have a balanced ratio of working age individuals to dependents. So we're going to see working age individuals. You could also say the, the elderly or senior citizens or um, individuals or citizens above the age of 65 that are no longer working. You could have said instead of working age individuals, you could have just said independents. These are people who are working, typically within the ages of 15 to 65. Um, so yeah, what else could we say? The shift towards an aging population, that's typically what we see in stage four, particularly stage five as well, but stage four kind of starts that, it lays the foundation. So as we go to an aging population where the crude birth rate continuously declines, we'll see increased health care and pension costs because there's going to be greater health care needs. Old people break their hips more, and that can strain public resources and budgets. Or it will refocus priorities and re refocus funds allocations from education where there was a lot of children being born to healthcare and social security programs, such as pensions. A declining birth rate may result in a smaller workforce, potentially causing labor shortages in key sectors of the economy. Increased investment in technology and automation may occur to compensate for a shrinking labor force, and that can enhance productivity. The focus on skill developments, because we typically see more skilled service economies in these developed countries, and Argentina may get there more. They already have that foundation laid. It may intensify as the economy shifts towards more advanced and service-oriented industries. So what are our takeaways from this FRQ? The DTM and ETM are important concepts on the AP exam, and you may or may not be given the chart. I would expect, for the most part, you will be given the DTM if asked about the DTM directly. There are going to be questions on the AP exam that you may have to reference the DTM to answer, but it's not asking about the DTM directly. You're just going to have to use your context clues to think about how that natural increase rate, what's the causes of deaths in the country impacting society? When we look at the highest natural increase rate, we're actually looking at stage two. Yes, the total fertility rate is the highest in stage one, but the highest natural increase rate is in stage two because we're still going to have very high birth rates, but we're going to have exponentially decreasing death rates. The highest total fertility rate, as we saw in part A, stage one. The lowest birth rate is in stage five. The shortest doubling time is in stage two. And that's correlated with the highest natural increase rate. As the population grows really, really quickly, the doubling time is going to be very, very short. In stage five, however, when they have a very, very low birth rate, the doubling time is going to be very, very high. The highest life expectancy is in stage five. We see the life expectancy increase overall as the countries move through each stage. The total fertility rate initially declines due to urbanization, higher cost of living, educational opportunities, health care improvements. There's so much that causes that TFR to decline. And it starts to decline slowly in stage two, but a lot more in stage three and continuously declines in stage four and stage five. The total fertility rate declines from stage five throughout each stage. It doesn't go back up. The Malthusian theory says that population growth will inevitably outstrip food production, and that's going to lead to resource shortages, particularly food shortages. That's what Malthus talked about was food. So that's going to lead to famine and population decline. The meal Malthusian theory says that population growth will surpass resource production, not just food. So that could be shelter and land and water. And that means that we're exceeding the carrying capacity. Malthusian theory doesn't expect countries to go past stage two of the DTM. That's the only stage that population growth is exponential. So once countries like Argentina go into stage three or stage four like Canada or stage five like Spain, Malthus didn't account for that because population growth isn't increasing as much as it does in stage two. It's not increasing exponentially. And actually in countries in stage five like Iceland or Greece or Spain, their population growth may be negative. They're going to be seeing a declining aging population. While the DTM is not an economic model, as countries progress, their, econ their economies are typically more manufacturing-based. Then they turn into service and tech-based with more female employment. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. If you have any questions whatsoever about AP Human Content or this FRQ in particular, leave a comment down below. I'll be glad to answer them. I have more AP Human Geography videos on lectures, FRQs, MCQs. Go check them out on my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.